That is something that we have um, done and we are doing it a lot, especially in winter um, when there is not so much fresh things from, from the garden. And we work together in Austria in the health center, Country Life, and it's also a mission school at the same time. So we have a lot of people to grow for and so we need to grow. Yeah, we can grow as much as we want and it's still eaten every time. So uh, this is our background. And um, maybe at the beginning, I would ask who of you have ex has experience with sprouting already? Uh-huh, yeah, a little bit also. Good. And I believe, um, yeah, I believe we can still all learn something new. You know, we are doing it um, now for maybe three years, but we still, we still have things that we are discovering all the time. Good, then um, what we will be talking about. We want to talk about what are the sprouts. Also, why to sprout and what are the benefits of sprouting? Um, what do we need for sprouting? And how do we actually do it? And how do we store sprouts? Because this is one of the important thing. If you grow sprouts and you have a lot of them, you cannot eat everything at once. And also you want to spread it over the days. So it's very, very um, important part how to store them. And then how to, of course, enjoy them and eat them. <laughs> With the <your> hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like Javik said, we would like to share with you our experiences and also we'd like to make it simple uh, so that everyone uh, can do it because it's the case, everyone mm -hmm. can do it. I also don't have any background in gardening or anything or in, yeah, any kind of, yeah, in this area. So everyone can do it, even children, and it's actually a very nice activity you can do mm -hmm. also in family. Everyone can have a responsibility and children can learn also and it's something you can of course then enjoy when you have, see the result and it's very quick also to make it yeah so it has many many advantages to do sprouts at home yeah so i'd like to first talk about the growth stages and what is actually sprout and so you need uh, first when you start sprouting you have the seeds uh, seed it's important to have a good quality of them because not every seed will have the same um, or germinate the same yeah some are better quality than others so this is an important thing and also how you store them it should be dry right and yeah also it's important um, so sprouting is a natural process uh, and depend on the moisture, basically on moisture, on the light and on the air also, yeah. And so the first stage is the seed and then after one, two days you have, call it, you have the seedling and after you call it sprout, so that's what it will concern us, it's about three to six days and that's the average but it can be different for some other seeds, right? And after this, you call it microgreen. It's mostly after one week. And what will help you to recognize when it's already microgreen, it's, we call it the first true leaf that will appear. And this is called also cotyledon. And this contain already chlorophyll. And at this stage, the plants or this, not the plant, but you call it microgreen already, yeah? Yeah, so that's the growth of stage. And now, today we're gonna talk about sprouts. Yeah? Why sprouting? Then after microgreen, you have already a plant that is mature. You call it plant on this. So what are the benefits? They are easy to do, as we saw it already. Everyone can do it. It's not a big deal. And also because they are healthy, they are fresh. So they contain, contain a lot of enzymes and are full of antioxidants. Antioxidants, as you know, they are good to fight against free radicals and so they will also strengthen your immune system. And so it's vitamin E, A, C, selen, zinc, etc. phytochemicals. 
and they are full of vitamins, minerals, fibers, protein, even, yeah. So those are, they are called now superfood, yeah, because they really contain a lot of, a lot of nutrients. It's a bomb. <laughs> then, because they are fresh all year round, so like Yarik was mentioning, in the winter, if you don't have much possibility to grow, to have a winter garden, then you can be sure to have something fresh uh, anytime. You can make it anytime inside. Also, if you don't have a garden, you don't even need to have a balcony, you can do it in your kitchen or in any room. You just have to have the right condition. We will talk about later what are the right condition. And also it's fun. <laughs> it's very nice. Uh, yeah, it's a nice thing to do. Activity. It's a nice activity. It also the uh, puncture or to regularity. Constant. Yeah, yeah, you need to. Regularity. That's good. It's a good uh, to learn to be consistent. Yeah, you don't need much time to do it, but you need to be regular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very important also for children to learn, and it's delicious. <laughs> You can also have different sprouts. Some have a more neutral taste that are more mild. Some are more spicy, like radish. Radish is a, you can then discover a lot of new taste, tastes. Yeah, and it looks nice. It's also something that I use also in restoration, for example. So if you want, yeah, for restoration. So restaurant. So if you are want to grow more and. So it's a good also opportunity to sell them then in restaurant, right? And you can decorate plates and also we don't only eat with um, stomach or we also, it's nice when it looks nice, right? Also God, God had made it that way, that the colors are beautiful, that it looks beautiful. Yeah, so it's also from God that made it beautifully, yeah. And so you don't need much. There are many different ways of doing. We want today to focus on one way that we find it the most practical, what also Yarek uh, experience. And so you need seeds, of course. You need the water. The water needs to be fresh and also clean water. It's important. You have to have the right temperature. So the room needs to be about uh, 18, between 18 to 22 uh, degree. And that's the best temperature. You want, uh, you want to put them directly on the sunlight because this is then will dry them out, but they need light. Yeah, we're going to talk also about it. Not the beginning because to germinate there, it's better when it's in the dark. Like a seed will be put in the soil, for example, but uh, afterwards they need sunlight, but not direct sun. Yeah. And so light and jar. Some jar, we're gonna also look at it. Uh, there are different sizes. We like jar because uh, we want to consider hygiene. Also, they're easy to clean and they are also safe. It's not plastic or other things. And you can easily disinfect them or put them in the sun. You know that bacteria will be killed and to avoid that uh, any problem with mold, um, etc. Yeah. So hygiene is also important. Yes, and with the jar, you will need also a net and a rubber. We have here some, but Yarek will show you later. Those are mosquito, mosquito nets we use simply. Um, there are different kind of mosquito nets. Just look that they are kind of natural and not don't contain a lot of chemical. When this one is a fabric one, so that's better it's than fabric. if it is uh, plastic or something. Mm -hmm. huh? Yes, and a rubber, just to fix it around, we'll show you. And it will depend also the seed you are using that you want to germinate because we have some nets that are more, the whole are closer to each other. Mm -hmm. So for seeds that are very small. For seeds that are small, yes. So it depends the size, but basically we use the first one that we, that we pass out. Mm -hmm. For most of the seeds, it's not a problem, but for example, onion is very tiny. Uh, no, what was very tiny? Basil also, but basil, yeah, we will talk. Slimy. It's slimy. Um, broccoli is also a little bit small, but sometimes uh, we just put two of those bigger ones over top of each other. 
you know, if it's not too small. I think onion was one of the smaller one. Mm -hmm. And oh, amaranth. Yeah, amaranth. Amaranth, yes. amaranth is very tiny. That one would go through. Yes, and then you will have to also find a system to to hold the jar. So here we, we got this system here that we bought, but you can buy many different systems. You can also build yourself something. There will be some picture Yarek will then show you. And the, the idea is to have the right angle. It's important that the water can go out and also that the air can circulate. Um, yes, but it should also not be too much that the seed should not gather there in the nets, yeah? So it should be really the right angle the, to have it more, let's say, it's better, yeah? That they can grow well. Yes, that was what is needed. Um, of course, there are different ways how to sprout. This is just one of them, the jar method. Uh, when my, when I was small, my mom was sprouting every day and she was using a round sprouter with several layers. And we have it here in the picture, something like this, which is um, it, it's a good way to do that. But once I came with the jar, she she's always using a jar from that. Because the one thing with this one, it's harder to keep it uh, clean and hygienic. So when it grows in it, um, the water comes in and then flows from one to another, but the sprouts don't get really washed. It's just the water is there and then it runs away. But it's it's a bigger danger that it will it will sooner go bad. Yeah, while with the jar you have a way uh, to wash it completely and then rinse the water out, uh, as we will show, as we will see a little bit later. There are also some kind of sprouters like this ceramic one. I don't have much experience with those. It probably it's the same same system. So for some seeds it works very good, but um, for others it works not as good. So always it depends on what uh, what you grow, which seeds. It might be actually good idea uh, or not. Mm. We have also some seeds like cresse. That one would not uh, grass. Uh, that one would not grow very well in the jar uh, because it also creates slime. Slime on the second picture here, you can see there are seeds that are slimy, and when they get wet, they get slimy. And this one would plug. They are plugging the net, and then it just doesn't work well. And they don't germinate. They don't germinate they so well. A clump together and it's mm -hmm. not growing. So for Cresce it's great the system that is here on the vat, vate, or even we were using a kitchen towel, spread it on a tray and then we spread it on top of the, the Cresce and then it, you just cut it. Afterwards you cut it and the root you throw. Um, so the jar method is um, for us as Karen said, it's um, very simple and it's especially hygienic because you can really disinfect the jar um, and you can wash the sprouts very well. So it's practical and effective. For us, we found that it's a better for hygiene, easier to wash, and it's suitable for most of the seeds. For actually most of it, what we grow, um, we could do it inside in that one, except Cresce. Mm. So it's not good for slimy seeds like cress, chia, rucola, flaxseed or basil. But here is one thing, for example, we are growing rucola every time in, in this jar, but it's because we are making a mixture of seeds. So we, we take seven different seeds and we mix them together before we have them in big container. And now we take a uh, amount of this mixture and we put it in the jar. So the rucola is only about five to seven percent. And then when it's it's spread it, it uh, it doesn't matter that it creates the slime over the seed because it has other seeds all around and it doesn't create problems. And 
and like that you can have a taste of rucola inside of the mixture. So the main reason for making a mixture is to have a little bit of the spicy taste inside of the more mild. So the, for example, the mixture that we do is based on alfalfa. Um, it's about 60 to 70% is only alfalfa. And the rest of this 40% uh, is the rest of the seeds. Yeah, and they create a little spice in it. For example, radish is, has a spicy taste, uh, so that one is inside, and also broccoli. Broccoli, mustard, and what mustard is that? Mustard seed, also uh, clover, yeah, clover, red clover, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, mustard. What is there next? Mm -hmm. And fenugreek. 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 Now we come to the part how to do it. So when we have a jar, it doesn't need to be so big jar like this one. Only for our case, when we grow for many people, we need to grow many of those big jars um, to actually have a big enough amount. And for me, it's always easier to grow a little bit more and to learn and to really store it well. And then I can have, for example, one week pause and I don't need to every day you know, be washing. I can do it one week and then I have for another week. Yeah? Because um, as we will see, we had not a problem to store it for one week and even two weeks, it's not the problem. I would always say one week is safe and two weeks is still okay if, if it's very well packed and yeah. But the fresh, fresh, yes. fresher, better. But basically with sprouts, what is amazing is that when you harvest them, you don't cut them or kill them. So the sprouts are still, they still live. So you put them in the fridge and once you take them out of the fridge, they continue growing. Yeah, so you basically only hibernate them. So that means when you eat uh, sprouts from the fridge, you still eat them fresh, basically. Yeah, and that's amazing on that. Um, we have also a smaller jar that can be used. My mom is using similar jar like that, only for my mom and dad. That's perfect amount. And these are basically jars we are using, as you see, for storing food. So here we have granola. Here, this jar we also use for other purposes. And um, so it's just normal jar you find at home. Um, as Karen explained, we have this kind of uh, thing that helps it to be under the angle. And the water will just drop down. So it's good to either put, it, put some plate underneath and then just wipe it or um, you can, exactly, or what people do where my mom is doing, she just takes a big ball and puts this in the bowl and it will stay like that and the ball will catch the water. So the important, why we do the angle is that the water can flow out. Yeah, and once the water is out, it's actually okay if the angle is not so big, yeah, but it's important that the water flows out. It takes maybe half an hour. The first half an hour, the water it can still drop out. Um, yeah. So what do we do? I will directly also demonstrate it. We have a couple of seeds here. So when we have a seeds, it's, uh, it's good not to touch the seeds with your hand. So it's good to use some um, spoon or something because when you touch them with hand the one thing is that you can put some germs on it and the second is the static from your hands and then when you put it in the jar and you put the water the static will not allow the water to go close to the seed and then you might end up with 10-20% seeds of not germinating you know, so quick and so this is thing to watch for and we are putting one tablespoon for one liter of, um, of the volume. Yeah. So this jar has a four liters, so we use a four tablespoons. And one tablespoon is about 10 grams. So we use a 40 grams. It also depends what kind of seed it is, but we figured out that for most of this actually works quite well. It doesn't work, for example, for monk bean and for the like beans big. Those ones we would have to fill like like so big, yeah. 
or lentils, or lentils. Or the seeds that are bigger or sunflower seeds for example you can put much more inside mm -hmm. if not you will get just a small amount but this at the end you will see it's growing the jar is then full you, it's amazing because now it's so small on the bottom and at the end the jar is full we take the net and we are actually reusing the nets so one net is lasting for us at least two months and when we grow every week yeah it depends mostly it starts to uh, make some holes inside so then we just replace it but the the thing is what we do we always disinfect wash it after and disinfect it uh, with hot water yeah. we soak them in boiling water we soak them in hot hot water mm -hmm. and then you can just use it again and it depends on the quality of the fabric um, but it can last even longer yeah and then we have a simple rubber i guess from canning and this one is a little bit bigger so we just take it on double and we put it over and here it's important that it's a rubber that is strong enough yeah it should not be very loose so even now it's loose and i will tighten it but but this because i did it twice it's very strong and oops it's coming off and so you want that it's it it's not very loose and at this point you put water inside um, just use normal uh, tap water the best fresher better so if you have a good spring water this is the best of course but you will need during this process a lot of water so actually tap water is the only option or if you have outside some water from the well that's very good as well uh, it should be fresh and when we fill fill the water inside we found it quite important not to fill it very high just to fill a little bit because the pressure of the water also can make a difference of germinating of the seed when the seed is very deep and the pressure of the water is big it will not germinate so well yeah so it's just enough to put you know a couple centimeters it's a little bit challenging when you we don't have water here yet or we would not we will not put actually we can do that right why not yeah so Karen will bring some water it's a little bit challenging to get all the seeds down under the water under the water because of they will stick to the sides but we will see we'll manage it so one thing I wanted to mention is still that this uh, this method Karen was talking about the sprout that it is within the range of three to six days and this is something amazing because how many days we have in the week seven exactly and so imagine when you, when you what we do usually if we start sprout the seeds on Sunday and on Thursday or Friday latest we are done and we have a Sabbath free this is amazing and uh, and some seeds are even faster. We talked about the mung beans and uh, lentils. They are done in two to three days. Mm -hmm. So now you see Karen is putting, it's important that all of them are in the water. Sometimes you see a clump, big clump on top, which you can either use a spoon to a little bit. When they are clumped together, the inside seed don't get water so much. So it's important to a little bit break them. Mm -hmm. And so now it's more difficult. I put already a string there, but I will try to shake it. And now I have many of them on the sides. So now it's the point to fish them. Fish them, yeah. I put it too high, but. With a little bit of patience, we can do it. So, like this, uh, depending on the seed, we leave it for 4 to 12 hours. Uh, we are usually leaving it overnight, so 8 hours, 8 to 12. Uh, it, it doesn't need more than 12 for sure but we are because we are doing the mixture of the seeds we have to take the time of the seed that is germinating the slowest but they are all all kind of approximately the same 
So overnight, eight hours is usually safe. We have also a list of seats and there is a, a time for each. Um, but it will depend also the temperature of the room mm -hmm. and the other condition. Yeah, but mostly it's the same. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, we cover it with the towel or if you have a darker place to put it for germinating, it's perfect. It's, it's not a crucial, sometimes we didn't even do it and it germinated well, but um, germination is a natural process that usually happens in the soil. So uh, we actually heard that many people recommend to cover it. Um, and then after those 12 hours, we would um, put the water out. I will do it here as a sink. We put the water out and flush it once more with the clean water. And you will see that the water will be, will be colored because of the, it soaks, the, the seat, seeds has, uh, yeah. So while Jarek is rinsing the seeds, I will uh, explain you after. Uh, the water will be out and it's important that the seeds then will not stay together. So, so Jarek will turn the jar and to try to spread the seeds that they are going all around the jar and be kind of separated from each other. And that's also very important that they don't create a big uh, clump. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So we, we just, at the beginning it's very easy and they stick very well on the sides of the jar. And that's the point. They need to get as much as uh, uh, light and, or light, not light yet, but the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So more of them, I see I still have some water. So this one is the water that should drop out. Yeah. So if I would put it there, it drops out. And it's important that they are, the seeds don't stay so much on this surface here. And this is why this is helpful to have tight, because then the seeds don't come in between of the layer of the, of the cloth and, and the jar. So I usually just knock it down you know, from the sides and tighten it again, and that's fine. And like that, we leave it for another, another half a day. We are rinsing uh, for sure twice a day, in the morning and in the evening. And it's good to be regular on it because sprouts are quite sensitive to when they get dry, they slow down the process and yeah. And now when it's summer, we even did it every time, three times a day because especially when it's more warm, warmer it is even if you have at home in winter very warm, just do it three times, they will grow even faster and it will be done sooner. So it's not that you would lose more time but very often you gain time and you have it sooner and done. Um, so we do it in the morning then, during the lunch, and then in the evening and overnight. Usually it's the temperature a little lower, so it's fine. Running water. So the harvest, as we said, is between of three, third and eighth day. Um, eighth day is already too late. If you grow, um, for example, alfalfa and similar seeds for seven days. This was already long enough and maybe, maybe it's too cold for them or um, the important is that when you sprout, there will be some seeds that do not germinate. The good germination is 95%. That's very good and higher. That's very good. There will be always some seeds that will not germinate. If it gets under 90%, it gets worse. Um, and you have to be more careful that the mold will not start to grow. But if you, if you are finished with the sprouts in five days, as it is usual, you have no problem and you are washing well. It will not start uh, mold. The first thing that starts to mold are the, um, the seeds that died and the shells. Yeah. And basically, when we are done after five days, the shells are the thing that we will get rid of. We will wash them out, as we will see soon. Wash away yeah, the seed shell. Do you see actually over me? <laughs> hmm. And then we are packing it and storing it in the fridge. Here uh, we took a couple of the pictures. How do we do that and in our place? 
So as this one we actually saw, we fill the jars with water, with seeds and water, and then we put it on the rack. Uh, this rack did not fit with us to the car, but it was planned to take it with us. But uh, we have a place for three big jars and one small jar you can fit in this rack. Um, this is basically a rack from the shoes. Uh, so it's uh, for shoes. It's made in IKEA and it's yeah, designed for shoes, but it works perfectly for this purpose. And underneath, we put just the, you know, underneath of the flower pots, you have this part that you water in. So this we put underneath and the water just goes in it and we can keep it nice and clean. Um, so after, after the first day, this one, this one is the first day, yeah, like what we see here, that the seeds are holding on the surface of the jar. The next day, or I think this is already like the second day, you will see that the seeds already have the shoots, yeah, these little roots. And in this phase, it's still important every time you wash them, when you wash them, you can fill the jar like only a little bit that it has water and you rinse it a bit. Uh, don't leave it in the water for a long time. It can stay for five, 10 minutes, that's okay, but no longer. Some people leave it a little bit that the seeds can soak the water. Yeah. And then you flush the water out and then you again put it on the surface of the jar. At a certain point, when the roots are getting bigger and bigger, it will not be possible anymore. And you see most of the seeds are already down on the jar uh, and just some of them will stick, that's fine. Yeah, and then it's just important to care for not to have the seeds all the way down at the bottom of the jar because they are drying very fast because of the air. Then the next day, I think this is already like third, third, fourth day, they are getting uh, already bigger and this is the point when they are starting to get green. And at this point, this is already washing. So at this, well, at this point that already the small leaves are coming up, I think it's about the third day, uh, you, when you wash it, you fill the jar all the way to the top. Uh, all the way to the top. And you plug, plug the hole with your hand and, and you shake the sprouts inside. And this is especially important because of the sprouts coming apart because they are growing with the roots to each other and they would make one big clump. And especially more seeds you grow in the jar, harder it would be than even to get them out of the jar. And by, by this movement, because the jar is full of water, you don't damage the seeds. They stay untucked. Yeah? If the jar is already more empty, I fill it again because some of the water will run out, of course. Uh, it depends on how big is the hand. My hand is not so big, so sometimes the water is coming out. Uh, so it's good to kind of keep it in the yeah, uh, filled level. And then the sprouts loosen while you wash it. You can do it several different directions, yeah, either like this, then like this. And, and, and you see that the seeds, the little sprouts are coming apart. And then also they change their position. And while you set it in the, the, into the rack, they will get green on the leaves that have been inside. So very often happens um, that, that the inside mm -hmm. leaves are white. Yeah, 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 they are white. yellow white. They don't get completely green. Yeah. And for this, it's also good, especially at the end, to wash it rather more times than less. Mm -hmm. Because even a half a day on the, on the light makes already a big difference. And, and all of them, they will get green. And then when you shake it again, the, another one will get on the surface and they will get green. It's and you will- It's the that give them the, the color of exactly. green. Exactly. Yeah. And then it's a joy to use the sprouts for decoration because they are nice and, nice and green mm -hmm. all over the place. So this one is all, already almost done. Then eventually this all sprouts will be laying on the bottom of the jar. So the point is to get it, that it lays on, on here, not, not at the bottom, yeah. This I experienced really that it's important because of the dryness. They very dry quick. And Karen was speaking about the temperature. Oops, I did not realize that it's important to not 
not have too hot. For example, sprouts don't need the sunlight. Like they, they, need, they don't need direct sunshine. And especially if you have it on the window, it's a big danger um, that when the sun shines directly, inside of the jar, it creates much higher temperature than outside. It's like a greenhouse. And so if there is a little bit of sun, then only short time in the day and not the sun in the, at the noon or in the middle of the day. Yeah. Um, sprouts need just light and they will get green only with light, even if it doesn't have direct sunlight. So it's good to put it on the window, but uh, not when it's direct sunlight. Or if it is the north side of the house, that's perfect. It will get, get green. Um, that was the temperature. And now we are coming to the washing. What we do, our point is to separate the, diet, the seeds that died and the shells from the rest of the sprouts. So we are taking a big bowl like this and we fill it with water. You can fill it even all the way to the top. And then when you, with the hand or with something, you will a little bit wash, uh, rinse the sprouts, the shells will come up and the seeds that died, they will come down. And then uh, we usually take a spoon and we take the shells away or even just put them onto the side of the bowl and in the middle we can take the fresh sprouts and we place them on the towel. This we found uh, to be the best option for us before we were using even a sieve, like a metal sieve. But this I found a little bit harsh for the sprouts because they, the, the sprouts that were in contact with the sieve, they, when I would be taken away, it would be a little harsh for them and then some of them would break. So if the sprout will break, this is the sprout that will, the sooner will be going bad. Yeah? And we want to as much as prevent that. And the towel is very gentle because, and it soaks the water very well. So the point is to not have them very wet. When you put it in the fridge, they should not be soaked wet. They should be moist, but not wet. And so we are coming to the rinsing and storage. Um, you have something for this? So I actually explained already this. Separate the shells. Place sprouts on the sieve or towel to get rid of excessive water. And if you are eating it right away, you don't need to be so careful about it. You just take it and then eat it. Yeah, it's fresh. But if you want to store it, then um, how do we do? You can see it here on the bottom picture. You see a container that has a kitchen towel inside around. It doesn't need to be all the way here someplace where it's not. It, it, it's just a towel that is uh, uh, moisture, moistened and it keeps the moisture, but not the wet. So when we put it into the, into the container, the bottom of the towel will get wet from the excessive water that still is in the sprouts you know, down. And then when we cover, cover it on top, we spray it with the sprayer that the top of the uh, container is also moist. Yeah, and then we just cover it. It's good to have a little hole inside that uh, because sprouts are fresh, uh, they, are, they are happy if they have a small intake of the air. Um, if the hole is too big or if it, the container is completely open, in the fridge it would dry very quick. So it's important to cover it. But it's not like microgreens. Microgreens, when you buy it in the shop, they are sealed completely very often. Not, not always, but very often they are also sealed. Here you can see some of the other ways how uh, some people do it. This one is from one of the sisters in church. They just had a big rack like that. Um, this one is the same system as I showed you before, only it's hanging on the door. Um, yeah, uh, we forgot to show also this system. This is something we have in our shop, in in our in the country life, and this fits to the smaller size of the jar, and you just screw it on, and it directly stands on the table like that. 
Uh, so it's quite practical. And then you can put it away and doesn't like clean it very well. So it's just fine. For us, it's just a little bit too small, this jar. Um, we have something more to say. Otherwise, of course, we are happy if you have some questions, so curding our knowledge. Yeah, maybe just how to eat them, or like, uh, I think you don't need a recipe for this, you can just be creative, you can eat them, either you can put them in sandwiches, for example, to make it more a knack, how do you say, crunchy, yeah, mm. crunchy, or you can eat them in a salad. You can also just eat them like this um, next week. You can either mix it or you can be creative. Um, yes, you have. What's the difference between micro greens and sprouts? Like the taste. How they feel? This is difficult to describe taste. Uh, for example, broccoli. I personally like more micro greens because broccoli, when you sprout them, they're very small and I mean, it tastes also a bit like broccoli, yeah, logically. But when they are bigger, also they are they make a nice stem that are soft and crunchy and you have to see different the seeds but uh, radishes are very spicy mm -hmm. yeah so you have to try it out and i really like your roots beets yeah root beets I yeah see. yeah they, they make very nice um, sprouts and they look beautiful also and the onion onion you, you should try it out uh, because the seeds are black and then they do those green um, kind of small roots and they look really beautiful and they bring nice flavor also in the food. Mm -hmm. I believe microgreens are, uh, people like them or especially restaurants like them because of the decoration purposes. They can decorate much there because they are bigger, more green. Uh, but sprouts I found much easier to grow and much easier to do, especially at home. You don't need so many things as for microgreens. Mm -hmm. For microgreens you need a trace, you need some soil. If you use your own soil then it's easier, but if you have to buy coconut coir or something it's a little bit more difficult and it also takes longer. Yeah, the microgreens grow, grow longer and at that point you already can actually add some nutrients to it. So this is one thing you can do but also you have longer think longer way to water them and to care for them. But it's still fun to do microgreens. Yeah, <laughs> still, we are doing also microgreens. Yeah. So if you have if you have time you want to spend it in it, it's also worth it to try oh, it. Definitely. Yeah. And this on the picture you see this package, this is a brother for the church that is uh -huh. next near by in Austria. And this brother they have kind of they are doing homemade uh, things like sprouts and they also have crackers and they go, they sell it on markets. I think he is doing it two or three times a week mm -hmm. and he has now clients and he's doing very good product and mm -hmm. he's making connection with the people in that way. So it's also a good idea to have contact with people or for small ministry or for income also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's funny because for us it's very small packages and we also, sometimes you can also, if you are invited somewhere, it's a nice present to bring and with two people are not used to eat a big amount of them. Uh, so it's, it's okay. It's, you, they're just a little there, a little there. At TGM when we have one big bowl on the buffet, it's, it's gone then after. It makes a big one difference year. if if it is also mixed, because if the sprouts are mixed in this mixture, you don't have so strong taste, for example, if you eat only radish, yeah, that, that's, that's very strong. So you put a couple of them on the, on the bread and you eat the bread like that. But if you have a mixture, you can put the layer of it. You can just put it as a salad and, and it's a mild mixed with a little bit of sparks inside. Yeah, the radish and the broccoli gives it a spark. The broccoli, by the way, is very good against cancer. So a lot of people who have cancer, they they start with uh, growing uh, broccoli sprouts. Um, what else do you have in your mixture? You have alfalfa, broccoli. So, alfalfa, alfalfa, broccoli, fenugreek, red clover, rucola, uh, mustard seed, and... Cress. Cress. is not there. Yeah. I believe mean not. And basil? No. No? You can, you can mix it. Red ah, did I mention radish? 
Radish. Mm -hmm. So seven. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can do whatever you like. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But the biggest amount is alfalfa to make the volume and to make it nice because alfalfa is mild and it's also very easy to grow. It grows very nicely. Um, and the rest are the other. Mustard seed is very little, like 1% or 2%, because it's also strong. There are other things if, that you can use if you are sprouting lentils, for example, or some kind of beans, mango beans. You can use it also if you make, for example, a wok with mm -hmm. a lot of vegetable and rice. It's also fitting inside also with mm -hmm. uh, a meal like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know somebody was also mixing of um, mung beans inside. But for example, here, this is an example of seeds that need longer and mung bean needs only three days. So then you have the mung bean already in the later stage. You can still eat it. It's nice. Only it's already, it's already going into the, the, it's opening the leaves. So it's already a little bit bigger than the rest of the seeds. Yeah, so you, you want to watch for that. I like mung beans when they are very small and tiny and fresh and they are, you know, just, just bursting and, and fresh and then they are the best. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Do you have some other question? So there is the thought about if there are some seeds that stick oh. together, the only way is to just mix them with others. Mm -hmm. no other way to and not too much inside of the mixture. Either this or either the, this or technique with mm -hmm. the to kitchen towel. On the kitchen to spread towel. this mm -hmm. and spray it, yes. Yeah. That they are well spread it. Yes. Mm -hmm. But this you cannot rinse it then with the water, you will have with a sprayer to s sprinkle them, to so make them moist. Yeah. You can see a little sieve. This is also either you do it on the vate or paper kitchen towels, or this little sieve is actually a good idea. Just before we came here, the last two weeks I was also trying one. The only thing is I put too much seeds. Yeah, so don't put too many seeds on it and then it should be fine. And it, the roots just go down. Here in this case, it goes down to the water in the bowl. And this water you just change every day or every second day. And the roots just take the water up. And you don't need to even water them from up. This is a big benefit. The other way, like here, you have to kind of water it either from top. In this case, it's quite easy because you can do it from the sides because it's small enough. Um, but this is also a very good system. I think I will do some more testing with it because, yeah. I like it. Mm. And it's possible to do also with grains. With greens. greens. What kind of greens? Greens. Grains. Mm -hmm. Yes. Actually, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. We sometimes some of our colleagues also did it. Especially we have a core, uh, uh, like we do a new start core, or special that is more focused on alkaline food, and so you can do this with uh, buckwheat. And then you can also, we do this with buckwheat. It goes very fast. It's like two, two days. And we do it in a big sieve. And on the sieve, we put a um, kind of cloth, those cotton cloth. And then we just rinse it two, two times a day. And if you want to keep it, you can put dry out on the buckwheat. And then it's like cereals. It's very good. That's so you, you dry them in, if you have a kind of uh, those. The hydrator, yeah, you put them in and then you can keep it in a jar like a granola. Mm -hmm. and you have your back, back with that is um, sprout, sprout it. It's great and you can it's do amazing. it with sprouts, you can do it. Uh, so mm -hmm. the, even with uh, other sprouts, you can dry and storage like that. Mm -hmm. you I, know, I never try with... With other, I know that with dinkle, I think, or other grain my mom was Most doing. Grain. Mm -hmm. Not, I think not green stuff. It's, of course, for sprouting, the seeds need to be organic. You don't want to eat something that is not. So it needs to be good grain. And, and also, for example, um, a sunflower seed. It's good when they are, sometimes they are very small, tiny, and they, they will not grow so well, uh, like smashed. But if they are nice, yeah, they can, they will grow like that. Mm -hmm. And of course, then the next step is to grow it longer and then the plant grow and then you cut just the top and the roots stay in the ground, um, in the soil. But that's not what we talk about but today. But sprouts with the cereal or grains, it goes very fast. Yeah, it's like it two days. Yeah, it should not be longer than yeah. like two, three days, mm -hmm. for sure. Sure. It grows very fast. Yeah. 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 
the shells? I mean, like, do we take the, the unshelled? We take unshelled already if we mm. do it in the jar. Yeah. If we do it in the soil, it's um, it's it's fine. Mm -hmm. I know with Matthias we've been doing it last year, and mm -hmm. even he sometimes it's a problem to get the shell off. Yeah, even then later. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not sure if he was al always doing it with the shell one or unshelled. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes, I just didn't know about sprouts. Mm -hmm. Sprouts, it would be hard with shelled. Yeah, yeah. It's it would come off. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and it was also we tried the um, the red beets. There are people that say it's better to soak it first, the, um, longer, mm -hmm. to soak it longer because uh, of this shell that is. That was for microgreens. We didn't soak it. We just spread the seeds on the tray, and because they were not soaked before, when they were growing, the, then the shell they they stay on the top, and then you should not, but you want to remove them, and then it's breaking the yeah. the, leaf. the leaf. So it's not good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Yeah. We thank you for your attention and and we wish you a nice beautiful day rest of the day. <laughs>